Hello everyone, I am back again for another uh, tutorial in my Android tutorial series. Um, I've been messing around with things, oops, and I think I've figured out um, how to get this record video working. And the problem is, uh, from now on, when I do the record video, I'm going to be working on it from my phone. So you guys won't be able to see what I record, obviously. But um, just be uh, reassured that it does work. I'm not entirely sure how to get it set up on the emulator. Maybe I'll figure that out a little bit later um, and show you guys because I'm not—I'm sure all of you guys don't have an Android phone. But anyway, let's get down to it. Now, if you remember, this should be around what it looked like last time. Uh, whoa. What are you doing? I don't want a Camtasia Studio tip. Anyway. Okay, so we have this intent that we're starting that uh, action video capture, but... I don't think we're supplying it with enough information is what I ended up figuring out. Um, so what we have to do is record intent. We have to add a little bit of extra information. <laughs> if I remember how to do it. Uh, what was it? Put extra. So we have to put more information into it. Now if you look at, if you type media store then hit dot, you can see all the different uh, settings we can give it. We can make it do full screen and uh, limit the size of the video quality. That one might be good. And I know zero is for low quality, one is for high quality. We want a good looking video so we're going to do high quality. And then another really important one is though probably the more important one we have to extra hmm, where is it output ha that's what we want now media extra output will uh set the uri of where to store the video and that's really important that's what we want now it takes a uri which um i believe we can get that from a file. Uh, from file. And that means we have to create a file where we want to save this video. Just save it as uh, tutorial.mp4, since I believe that is the recording format that it works from. And let's go ahead and set this file here is already set. Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and save that. And excellent. Looking good. I think it's working. So, okay. So we put all this information. It should save the thing into tutorial.mp4. And let's go ahead and start it up. Now, if you notice, I'm getting some errors um, that I uh, have set that haven't set the attribute debuggable set to true. This is going to happen if you're using your Android phone to debug. Um, in order uh, to make it so that you can debug on your Android phone rather than just the emulator, you have to give it permission to be able to debug. And what you do is you go to your Android manifest of XML. This stores information about your application. And you go to application, notice that things like the label and the name, and there should be some sort of debuggable. There it is. So set that to true. And what that does is that sets, uh, in the actual XML, it sets this, Android debuggable true. And this is a really important part of your uh, application because whenever you create new activities like this one, or maybe services or other things, or you need your uh, application to request certain permissions, uh, then you need to put all this stuff in here. Um, I guess, say if we wanted to restrict our uh, application to only people that have cameras, I mean, that might be something really important since our uh, thing revolves around cameras. Uh, let's go ahead and look for what uh, permission we need to set. These are all the different permissions, I guess, that you can um, give it. Uh, the most common ones are like access internet or access find location or everything. These are some of the things that you're going to be putting in there. Um, 
a uses feature is another one, uh, which is actually the one we want. This <clears throat> makes it so that if someone without a camera, which I don't know any Android phones that don't have a camera, but anyway, if someone without a camera uh, tries to open up your app, uh, it'll fail, or it'll pretty much just shut them out. So let's go ahead and, I believe, I'm not sure if you put this under your application or where you put this, but anyway, we have to set it's required to true. You might have to put this inside the application tag, but we'll see. Anyway, um, application. See, this is where you can uh, add permissions uh, without editing the XML, add instrumentation, whatever that means. Not sure what that is. Um, there might be one for adding hardware information. Oh, there we go. Android uses feature. Okay, so I think that's enough about that. Um, let's go back here, and now that we know we can debug, let's go ahead and hit this. And notice that this is my emulator, this is actually my phone. Um, we're going to run it on my phone, and you'll be able to see me stepping through it, but you won't actually be able to see the screen, which is perfectly fine. I'm just going to be pressing a button, opening up my camera recorder, and doing things like that. So you notice it's installing it on my device. Success. Okay, it's starting it. Excellent. And now I'm going to press the record video button and it pops up here. We create our intent, do all this stuff. We're just go ahead and hit F8 just to continue with that. And right now I am able to look at my phone and I'm actually able to record a video. I'm going to go ahead and press the um, record video button. Notice it made that little ding noise. and. We're going to record a few things, a couple seconds. I'm going to hit stop. There's the ding noise again. And let's let's go ahead and uh, it gives me an option that I can retake, I can play it, or I can hit OK. I'm guessing what we want people to do is we want them to hit OK. So hopefully it'll go to this on activity result. Um, we'll see if that happens. OK. OK. Looks like the result code did that. Interesting. The result code is negative 1. Okay, result okay is also negative one. Uh, I wouldn't think that a negative number would be result okay. But result code is negative one, request code is two, which is our record video, and we have our data. Okay, and looks like our data is going to external video media 28. So I think this is actually the, like the 20th video I've recorded. I've recorded quite a few videos on my phone. So it looks like we are able to access that. Um, so let's step through this. It should go to record video. I'm um, guessing it just didn't do it because there isn't anything in here. But we're going to probably want to do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and terminate this. Yuri. We could probably actually combine these two things in the future, but for now, get path video. Yuri, it's actually going to yell at me because this is the same name as something else which is again why we should probably combine uh, these two case statements into one thing but anyway let's go ahead and log that tag record path boolean success equals read from file we're going to use the same thing and we are going to read into the same kind of byte array but that's totally fine since we're not going to uh, it's not really going to matter and again, record path. Oops. I'm probably going to combine this <laughs> eventually. I keep saying that, but you know, whatever. Uh, okay, so let's start this up again. I'll make sure to go quickly through this time so I don't waste your guys' time uh, explaining things that you can't even see. Okay, hit the record video. I'm going to hit F8 to skip through all that. I'm going to take a really short video. Video, video, video. Okay, about two seconds long. And I'm going to hit OK. Excellent. So F6, switch request code, should go to record video. Excellent. So let's see if we can get our record URI. Uh, 29. I guess 28 was the last one, so it must have saved the video, which is totally fine. Record path, mount data, dsim camera, vid, blah, 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 dot 3GP. OK, 3GP. Interesting. That's the actual thing. So we might have to end up changing this. Oh, well. Um, 
I'm not sure if this actually did anything, to be honest, uh, since we were able to get the path here and it was something different, so uh, we might have to comment that out. But anyway, we're going to log that and let's see if we can actually read from the file. Let's see if we get file size. Okay, it's about, what is that, 80-ish uh, kilobytes. Um, and then we're going to read and close. Excellent. So we're able to read it. So exactly what we wanted. Wow, I'm quite happy that actually worked. But we can pretty much comment this out since I don't think this actually does anything and it's not really use useful. But excellent. Uh, I'm glad that worked. And we still have plenty of time, so I'm going to show you something else. Now, um, uh, let's, when uh, someone joins our app, let's, I feel like we should give them a little greeting. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think we should do that. So let's go ahead and create some sort of dialogue that pops up and greets them. Now, uh, to do that, the, uh, Android has a built-in show dialogue and uh, on dialogue create. Um, that really helps you out. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we have to create an int. Just go ahead and set that greeting dialog. And now when you call show dialog, what it will do is it will call the built-in um, on, di on create dialog method. That um, It will just call that. And what you have to do in that method is you have to create your own dialog and you have to return it. So uh, knowing that... And create that method. I'm not sure if you have to override this or not. I don't think so. Uh, make sure to import dialog. And again, we're going to have to switch the ID since the ID is the identification of which dialog we're going to create. Right now, we only have one greeting dialog, but trust me, you're going to have a lot more. Uh, okay. And right now, it's being mean to me because it wants me to return something, so let's just say return all there. Now for a, a greeting, um, you could probably be doing something like an alert dialog. That's uh, the easiest uh, thing to do. There's also several other different dialogs. Progress dialogs, like pretty much the spinner thing. Um, it's usually for when you need to like kind of stall the user while you perform some intensive operation. Uh, we might add a progress dialog later to when we open up the camera since when I actually pressed it on my phone, it lagged a little bit. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And we'll let's do it uh, an interesting way. We're going to do it inline. We're just going to do return new alert dialog. And alert dialog provides a builder. And we have to provide it with the context. And the context is just this. And let's go ahead and import that. And this way, we can do things like set title. Hello, that's a good title. And we can do something like set positive button. And what that will do is it'll add a button that does something positive like OK or confirmation or saying. Uh, let's just go ahead and say thank you. Let's change this to hello, you're awesome. Maybe we can uh, add, I think there's a set content or set description or. There has to be some something else. We can give them a nice little message. Uh, set message. There we go. You are awesome. Let's change this back to hello. And let's see if they accept our compliment. Now, this, this is kind of pointless right now. It's not actually uh, attributing anything to our application, but it kind of shows you how to do this. Um, and let's see. Now, after, or what do we have to do? We have to set positive button, we set the message of the button, and then we have to add a click listener. And if you remember from our previous tutorials, we talked about click listeners. This time we're just going to do it inline. And it's dialog interface that's on click listener. And if you just hit that, it creates it inline. Ignore all these errors for now. So whenever someone clicks this positive button, this is going to show up. Or um, it's going to execute code in here, sorry. <laughs> So, and then we also have to set a negative button. Which 
Change to something mean. And again, do that. And I believe that's all the options we want. Uh, we also want create, I guess. Um, let's get rid of that. Because create uh, creates the dialogue, and we want to return this dialogue that we just created, which is why we did it that way. And that should be everything that we need. Now, what do we want to do when uh, they say you stink? I think we just want to close the app. We're not letting any mean people in our um, app. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish. I think this will work. Okay, so if you noticed, um, I did main activity dot this dot finish. That's because um, we're in a uh, dialogue interface on click listeners, so we won't be able to actually do this dot finish because there is no this dot finish method in an on click listener, which is why we have to call the um, what is out pretty much outside of uh, this uh, on click listener, which is our main activity, and we have to call the finish method on that, which will close the app. And then, um, okay, so if they're all, if they say thank you, let's go ahead and what is what's this text thing that we have here? Uh, text view. Oh, we didn't give it an ID. Uh, ID equals. Plus ID, um, greeting. Let's get something like that. So if they say thank you, uh, let's go ahead and set the text of that. So text, I think it's, yeah, text view. Uh, find view by, I'm not sure if ID dot reading dot oh, first we have to import text view I'm just gonna do this and then import it um, okay so I'm curious let's just do it the long way because it's probably um, it's a lot easier to actually debug since I'm not entirely sure that this is going to work because we're in this on click listener. Okay, wow, it actually worked great. Okay, so <laughs> so set text, uh, let's set it to something. Uh, you are really awesome. So they say thank you, then we say you're really awesome. So again, this is kind of pointless, but I just want to show you guys how this works. So let's go ahead and hit the emulator so we can see this. Um, in the future, say if you're in the beta of your app, um, you kind of want to show something maybe that says, okay, we're in the beta, please submit any bug reports. This this just shows you how to do it, so this is kind of actually useful. So let's go ahead and you stink. Oh boy, it shut the app off on us. It's not exactly what we want. So we don't want to be mean. Let's go, go back to here. Let's get thank you. And it changes to you are really awesome. Excellent. So it worked. So remember, in the future, if you want some sort of any sort of uh, option that you want to give them a choice to do something, um, you can use an alert dialog. And another uh, really important feature about alert dialogs is one property, which is set uh, view. And what that means is you can go into layout and say create a layout like this that has like two uh, edit texts, which is where you type text into. Uh, that says like username or password and there's two edit texts here and then you can s you save that as like a dot xml file as a view and then you do set view and then you give it that uh, resource id then when they hit positive button you can then log them into something so it's a great way to get like user credentials and other information from the user without creating an entirely new activity um, i use it a lot in my applications um, Alrighty, uh, I think we're doing pretty good on time, so that is it for this tutorial. I kind of finished up on this recording video stuff, and I also showed you some cool stuff with uh, alert dialogues. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment, read, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.